Now the next section, this is, this is 1.2 therefore, section 1.2, polynomial in one variable. So in this section, and actually for the rest of the course, we only stay with one variable, and that one variable, well, until we get to chapter, chapter five. One variable in this example is x. So it says a polynomial in x is an expression of the form a n, a sub n, x to the n power, a sub n minus one, x to the n minus one power plus, goes all the way to a sub one times x, of course to the one power, and a sub zero times x to the zero power, which would be one. n is a non-negative integer, and each a i is a real number with a n not zero, so this cannot be zero, okay? So I can basically say x plus five, this is a, this is a uh, polynomial of degree one, because the, the highest power for x I have is one, so x plus five is a polynomial by itself. In this case, this is basically what I have, I have these. Everything else, all the other coefficients, a n, a n minus one, blah, blah, all of these are zero. That's why they disappear. So the only thing left is x plus five. So in this case, the coefficient of x, which is a one, is equal to one, and a sub zero, the constant, is equal to five. Here's another example given to you on the slide. Minus 13, so that's the coefficient, x to the five plus 10x to the four minus seven x to the third plus two x plus eight. This is a polynomial of the fifth degree. This is the, the highest value of the power you have. It determines the degree of the polynomial. So this is the degree of polynomial. Uh, again, everything in, in, in between, if for this to be a fifth, or, or also I can have eight, two x to the fifth plus two, this is also a polynomial of the fifth degree. Right? So I don't have to have everything stepping down from x to the fifth to x to the fourth to x to the third, x to the second, x, and then nothing, just a constant. So keep that in mind. How do you add polynomials? How to multiply polynomials? So first, the addition of the polynomials. You have an example here, 3x to the third, 3x to the third minus 2x to the second plus 7x plus 15 minus, uh, I mean plus, another parenthesis, 5x to the third minus 13x plus 12. So this is one polynomial, this parenthesis, this is another polynomial. So two polynomials of, of the same degree, both of them is the third, to um, add them together, right? So since the coefficient before the first parenthesis is positive, there is, there is no negative sign here, so you can lift the parenthesis and write this as it is. So 3x to the third minus 2x squared plus 7x plus 15, no parenthesis. And again, since this is a plus, you write everything in the second polynomial as it is also. So it would be plus 5x to the third minus 13x plus 12. So that's what they did. Now you combine the like terms. So for example, I have here 3x to the third and 5x to the third, right? The like terms I'm talking about is this same x with the same power. These are the like terms. So I have 3x to the third plus 5x to the third. That would give me 8. 3 and 5 is 8. So 8x to the third. So I get out of this one and this one. Then x squared, I have minus 2x squared and no more x squared. So I write the 2x squared here. I have a plus 7x here, I have plus 7x here, and minus 13x. So plus 7x and minus 13 would give you a minus 6x. So I get rid of these two, and in place I put minus 6x. And finally I have a plus 15 here, 
and plus 12. Both of them positive, plus 15 and plus 12 would end up being plus 27. So that's how you add two polynomials together. Now, how about subtracting two polynomials? So each polynomial, as you can see, is, is, is in, in, in the own parenthesis. So this is one polynomial of the third degree. This is another polynomial also of the third degree. By the way, they don't have to be the same degree. They can be different degree, and you can still add and subtract them. Now, again, there is no negative sign outside the first polynomial, so you can just lift the lift the parentheses up, get rid of the parentheses. So it would be x to the third minus x squared plus 6x plus 1. Second polynomial, it has a negative in front of it. The negative in front of the parentheses is going to change the sign of everything inside the parentheses. So that negative would change the sign of this one, change the sign of this one, and change the sign of this one. So this would become negative 3x to the third, this would be positive x squared, and this one would be negative 2x. And then you add and subtract the like terms. Again, we will do it here, x to the third, one of them, minus 3x to the third. So 1x to the third minus 3x to the third, that gives you minus 2x to the third. That's the first term. Minus x squared here, plus x squared. So that's 1x squared with negative, 1x squared with positive 1. So they would cancel each other. Right? You remember the properties we had before in the first section. And then we have 6x minus 2x. That will give you 4x. And the plus 1, that's the only constant you have. So that would be subtracting two polynomials. Again, for both of these, it's showing the polynomials of the same degree on, on both sides. It doesn't have to be like that. Multiplication of two polynomials. You have to pay attention to this a little bit more. The addition and subtraction is easier. Multiplication, sometimes people make a mistake. Here we have, we have 5x to the fourth times x to the third plus 2x squared minus 5x plus 7, all in parentheses. So that means that 5x to the fourth should multiply by every component of this parenthesis. Now we're going to use the law, the, the exponent law, that says a to the m power times a to the n power is equal to a to the m plus n. This is what we're going to be using here. Remember that? Okay, so 5x to the fourth times 1x to the third, since they have the same base, x, this is the base, where we learn the next one, since it is, it is the same base, you would write one of the bases and add up the powers, 3 and 4 would be added together. So this would become 5x to the 7. Then 5x to the 4th would be multiplied by 2x to the 2nd. Again, same base. So you write one of the x's and add up the power. 4 and 2 would be 6. So it would be 5 times 2, that's 10x to the 6th. And so on and so forth. The rest of them would come together. So 5x to the 7, 5 times 2, 10, x to the 4 times x to the 2nd is x to the 6, you add up the power. Next, 5 times minus 5 is minus 25, x to the 4 times x to the 1 is x to the 5th, because 1 and 4 would be added, become 5th. And 5x to the 4 times 7, 5 times 7 is 35, there is no x here, so it would be h to the fourth by itself. So this was the distribution we did, right? Another example. Now we have 
two polynomials in two separate parentheses, we want to multiply them together. Now in this case, every component in the first parentheses in the first uh, uh, polynomial should multiply by the second one. So 2x should multiply by 3x plus 2, and minus 5 should multiply by 3x plus 2. So everything should be multiplied by each other. So we say 2x times 3x plus 2 minus 5 minus 5 times 3x plus 2. Now you disturb you. So 2x times 3x would be 6x squared. 2x times 2 is 4x. Minus 5 times 3x would be minus 15x. Minus 5 times 2 would be minus 10. Now you combine the like terms. The only like terms is plus 4x and minus 15x. That would give you minus 11x. Everything else would remain. So this would be minus 11x, the middle term. So the product of these two, the product of these two would be 6x squared minus 11x minus 10. There is some special product rule when you're doing multiplication or simplification or factoring of polynomials that you should keep in mind. These special products include, number one, a plus b to the second power equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Again, if you don't believe that, you can go ahead and test it. I'm going to test just this one. a plus b to the second power, that means a plus b times a plus b. So based on what we just learned on the previous slide, that means a times a plus b plus b times a plus b. So a times a plus b would be a squared plus ab. b times a is ba or ab plus b squared. Combining the like terms, which is ab and ab, so that would be a squared. If you combine these two, that would be 2ab plus b squared. So if you forget the special product rule, you can just go ahead and do it yourself. You can do the same thing here and the same thing here. And you would see a minus b squared, which again, you can write it as a minus b times a minus b and go through the same thing. And you would see it would be this. A plus B times A minus B would be A squared minus B squared. In this case, the middle term would, would disappear. I'm going to do this last one also. This last one, this one here, would be equal to, again, distribute A times A minus B plus B times A minus B would be equal to. Now, a times this parenthesis would be a squared minus ab, and b times this would be ba, which is the same as ab. 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. So it would be plus ab in this case, minus b squared. Then minus ab and plus ab, they would cancel each other. So you would have a squared minus b squared. Right? So you would keep that in mind. Again, if you forget what it should equal to, you can just multiply it yourself. Oh, this is an example. Here is an example that applies to this to this third of the special products, x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 2 
based on this would be the first term squared minus the second term squared. The first term is x, so first term squared would be x squared, and the second term is 2, so minus 2 squared, which would be 4. x squared minus 4. The product of these two would be x squared minus 4.